Dina, uh, Rob Jackson will need to be promoted also, I think. Sue asked me to include him, so. Hello. Are we the first ones? I think we are. Oh, nice. Oh, Danny, uh, Patty Cisco and Dan Condren are on it as well, I think. We have Danny that makes 12 members on here now, I think. So we do have a quorum um, to start, but I'm, we still have some people signing in. Is 12 the magic number to have the quorum? Um, 11 is, 11. yes. Very cool. Okay, so we have Dina is on the phone with one of the committee members who is having some issues joining. So um, Ron Miller, so he should be on shortly. Rob, was Sue going to be, um, I'm assuming Sue's going to be a tent joining. Maybe she's having an issue. Spoke to her just a couple of minutes ago. She was good to go then. I'm here now. Oh, there she is. Okay. I was having uh, technical difficulties. Today has been a day full of technical <laughs> difficulties. So, but I'm here now. And is Patty here? Patty is here. Um, we do have a quorum. Um, Dina was talking with one of the committee members trying to help them get in. Um, I also had some technical difficulties connecting, so um, I'm sure it's going around. Okay. 
I think while we haven't started yet, I'm going to close my curtain so I don't have to do it later. Okay, and we are recording. We have started the webinar, so we are live um, for anybody on the meeting now. So Chair Cisco, anytime you wanna um, call the meeting to order, you can. And then once you do, I will um, read the housekeeping. And Dino can um, uh, announce the information for translation services. You'll do that after I call it to order. Yes. Okay. All right, well, with that, I am going to um, reverse what our agenda says, items one and two, and call to order the very first meeting of our Charter Review Committee and ask for roll call, please. Okay. Anna Diaz? Here. Adriana Arizon? Chris Mazia? Jocelyn Villalobos? Here, yep. Uh, Chris Mazia, was that you? Yep, Mazia is here, thank you. Thank you. Jocelyn Villalobos, are you here? Here. Thank you. Karen Weeks? Here. Mark Walsh? Here. Lisa Benford? Lisa Benford? Here. Thank you. Logan Pitts? I'm here. Thank you. Ernesto Oliveras? Here. Yvette Miner? Present. Ron Miller? Present. Danny Martinez? Present. Brian Ling? Here. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Jen Close? Here. Jasmine Gudino. Here. Abigail Cunningham. Here. Dan Condren. Here. Christine Bur Byrne. Present. Scott Bartley. Here. Annie Barber. Here. Chair Patty Cisco. I'm here. Adriana Ars Adazon, have you joined us? Okay, let the record show that all committee members are present with the exception of committee member Arizon. Okay, um, with that, I wanna go ahead. Oh, oh wait, Ms. Williams is gonna give us So um, Dina is our Zoom host and my deputy city clerk. She will, do you wanna make an announcement on how to participate and the um, Spanish translation. Thank you, Stephanie, we will do. For those just joining the meeting, live translation in Spanish is available and members of the public wishing to listen in Spanish can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the icon on your Zoom toolbar. It looks like a globe. Once you join the Spanish channel, we recommend you shut off the main audio so you only hear the Spanish translation. Alba, would you please repeat that in Spanish for those who have yet to join the Spanish channel? Muy bien, para los que recién se unen a la reunión, interpretación en vivo está disponible. Los miembros que deseen escuchar en español pueden unirse al canal. Para unirse puede hacer clic en el icono de interpretación que se coloca en la barra de herramientas de Zoom, que parece un globo. Una vez se una al canal de español, también se recomienda que apague el audio primario para que solo escuche la interpretación al español. Thank you, Pablo. I'll move you over to the Spanish channel along with our other interpreter, Charles, on the line. And you can um, hand off as you see fit. Thank you. 
Okay, so um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, committee members, if you could keep, please keep your audio on mute unless you're you're speaking. Um, this will help with any feedback that we may get during the meeting. And as members of the public join the meeting via Zoom, they will be participating via attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. If you are calling in from a telephone and choose to speak during the public comment portion of today's agenda, for privacy concerns, the host will be renaming your viewable phone number to resident and the last four digits of your phone number. The City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and are well staffed to monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. Public comments will be heard after each agenda item is presented. And after each ag agenda item is presented, Chair Cisco will ask for committee member comments and then open it up for public comment. If you are participating from Zoom or by telephone and wish to make a live public comment on a specific item at the time the public comment period is open, please use the raise hand feature. If you're calling in via telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. Throughout today's agenda, when Chair Cisco calls for public comment, an interpreter will be prepared to assist anyone needing translation services. Those using interpreter support will be afforded additional time for their public comment as required by the Brown Act. We ask those listening on the Spanish channel but wishing to make a public comment to turn off the interpreter cha interpretation channel entirely at the time you hear your name called so you can join the main channel to make your public comment heard and translated into English. This icon may now look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. You can then rejoin the Spanish channel at the conclusion of your comment to continue listening in Spanish. Thank you. Chair Cisco, I hand it over to you. Great, thank you. Um, and again, I wanna welcome everybody to our first meeting of the Charter Review Committee. Um, I'm sure all of our council members appreciate the hard work we're about to take on. Um, one of the things I'd like to do, even though we just did the uh, uh, roll call is have each of you introduce yourself uh, again and uh, just let us know who your uh, council member appointer is. Uh, just so we can start putting faces to names since we're on screen and that's it's harder that way. <laughs> so, um, if and you would, Chair, Chair Cisco, I just wanted to mention too that we have Jeff Cohen here, our city manager, who would also like to give a welcome to the committee. Great. Well, then let's um, let's have him go ahead and do that welcome, and then we'll go ahead and do um, our introductions to each other. So, thanks for for joining us, Mr. Cohen. Thank you, Chair Cisco. It's my pleasure to join the Charter Review Committee this evening and welcome you. And also thank you on behalf of our mayor and city council for your service on the Charter Review Committee. This is actually, I think, my third time that I've at least been involved peripherally with a charter review for the city of Santa Rosa. So uh, I've uh, experienced this several times over the years and really valued the input that we've gotten from our charter review process and uh, been very happy with the results we've received uh, in terms of revisions to our city charter. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I served as city manager here from 2000 to 2010, uh, then retired uh, down in Southern California, moved back to the community uh, for my retirement and then was drafted to return as an interim city manager here while we recruited for a new city manager and just very excited uh, to welcome our new city manager, Marakisha Smith. Uh, she'll be uh, joining the city team on January 3rd and looking forward to a transition and uh, a successful uh, relationship with Marakisha as our new city manager here. Um, the charter really is a, a key and critical document for us uh, in the city here as a charter city. It's similar to our national constitution. It is that kind of guiding document 
or core document for the city of Santa Rosa. And in many ways, it's the highest level document that we work with here in the city. It is also one of several options available uh, to us to provide guidance and direction to city staff and to establish um, permanent records of decisions and to implement policy. Uh, there are also uh, options like ordinances, um, city codes, resolutions, and policies that are implemented on an administrative levels. So an example of those are a personnel policy or a purchasing policy. All of those are combined with the overarching guidance provided by the city charter to help us provide the smooth administration and guidance uh, of our city and the implementation of services and programs for our residents. Um, I think as you go through the next several weeks of discussion, I hope that you will consider how any one of these recommended measures strengthens our abilities, our city's ability to provide local governmental services, programs, facilities, and services. Um, that really is the question that I hope you will focus on. And as you provide feedback and recommendations back to the city council. Um, as you do your work over the next several weeks, city staff is another resource to you. If you have questions or need clarifying information or documents, um, you will be able to request those through the chair of the committee and our city attorney and our city clerk who are working to staff this committee. And in reality, you have the whole city workforce available to you to help respond to those information needs. So once again, we're, we're honored to be working with you. We thank you for making the commitment uh, to serve on this very important charter review committee. And we hope you enjoy the experience in doing so. So thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. Back to you, Chair Cisco. Thank you, Mr. Colin. It's so good to see you again. And so thank you so much for stepping in on the interim basis. Uh, we really needed you and uh, and continue until our new city manager starts. So, but great to been, see you. It's been a great experience and a pleasure to do so. Thank you. Okay, so um, again, I'd like to uh, have the opportunity for each of the committee members to be able to introduce themselves so that we can see who everybody is. And uh, and then if you just, you know, give your name and also let us know who, your council member uh, is. Um, I'll call out your name and uh, at that point, remember to unmute, which I frequently forget to do, <laughs> and uh, give your name and that information and, uh, and then mute again and I'll call the next name. So I'm gonna start with Abigail. So well, Abigail, can you unmute and introduce yourself and let us know who your council member is? If yes. you know how to do that, I know. Well, <laughs> um, my name is Abigail yeah. Cunningham. I was appointed by council member Tom uh, Schweidel, and I'm very excited to be here. We're excited to have you. Thanks for that. Uh, I don't think Adriana is here. She has come since roll call was taken. If she could. I do see. Uh, I am here. Yeah, she just oh. joined. Okay. Yeah. Name and your council member appointer. Adriana Rison, Jack Tibbetts. Great, thank you. Uh, uh. And do we have Anna here anywhere? I can't see everybody. Hi, I'm right here. Okay, <laughs> great. Hi, I'm Anna Diaz, and then I got appointed by um, Eddie Alvarez. Great, nice to meet you, Anna. Thank you. Next is Annie. There you are. Annie Barber and Tom Schwedhelm appointed me, and I'm excited to experience this. For, for being here. Brian Ling. Brian Ling, I was appointed by Jack Tibbetts. Thank you. Good to meet you. Uh, Chris Mazia. Hi, 
Yes, Chris Mazia. Sorry, I'm on my phone. I couldn't get the email. I was appointed by Victoria Fleming, and okay. I will get an IT consultant for the next meeting. Okay, great. Uh, next, Christine. Christine Byrne, and I was appointed by Vice Mayor Rogers. Great, welcome. And Dan. Dan Condren, and I was appointed by Council Member Jack Tibbetts. Great. Danny. Danny Martinez, and I'm appointed by uh, Eddie Alvarez. And I didn't get the memo on how to fix the, uh, the right angle for this camera, so I'm trying to get the best angle. It look, it look good from my angle, so. <laughs> <laughs> Ernesto. Good evening, Ernesto Oliveras, appointed by Vice Mayor Rogers. Yvette. I'm Yvette Miner, and I was appointed by um, John Sawyer. Jasmine. Hi, Jasmine Gudinho, and uh, I was appointed by Councilwoman Victoria Fleming. Great. Nice to see you. Jen. Hi, Jen Close, also appointed by Council Member Fleming. Great. Welcome. And uh, Jocelyn, I think Jocelyn was not here earlier, but if she's here now, she should. Here. Um, I'm Jocelyn Villalobos, and I was appointed by Vice Mayor Chris Rogers. Great. See you. Uh, Karen. Hi, I'm Karen Weeks, and I was appointed by Tom Schwedhelm. Great. Lisa. Hi, everyone. Lisa Badenford. I was appointed by Mayor Chris Rogers. Great. Logan. Good evening. My name is Logan Pitts, and I was appointed by Mayor Rogers. Hi, Logan. Mark. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Mark Walsh, and I was appointed by Council Member Alvarez. Great. Uh, Ron. I'm Ron Miller, and I was appointed by Natalie Hall. Great. Scott. Uh, Scott Bartley, I was appointed by Council Member Sawyer. Great. Well, good to see you all. I'm Patty Sisco, and I was appointed by Council Member Sawyer. And I wonder if we could also have uh, staff introduce themselves now uh, before we begin. Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Williams and I am the city clerk and will be clerking uh, the um, committee um, for you and with uh, the city attorney, Sue Gallagher. Great. Hi, I'm Dina Manis. I'm the Deputy City Clerk, and I'll be the Zoom host for a good portion of these meetings, working with Stephanie to get you your meeting agenda documents and getting them out to the public as per required by the Brown Act. And I will say, um, Dina will be uh, sharing uh, Zoom hosting duties. We do have another staff person, Sandy Bliss, that some of you may know who will also be sharing hosting duties. So she will, um, you'll see her at some of these meetings also. Great. And I'm Sue Gallagher, city attorney and uh, our office will be the primary um, substantive staff uh, for the committee. And it will be me and Rob Jackson. I'll let Rob introduce himself. And I'm very excited about this process and looking forward to working with all of you. Hi everyone, I'm Rob Jackson. I'm an assistant city attorney. I'm pulling up the Montgomery ranks along with Mr. Bartley. So we'll gladly hold those together. Okay, always important, the Montgomery ranks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks again. Um, I, I agree with both Sue uh, Gallagher and with, uh, Mr. Cohen, this is a really great opportunity. I had the opportunity 10 years ago to, to sit on the committee and just found it such a rewarding and fascinating experience. So thank you all for making this commitment. It is kind of a big one um, and I hope you enjoy it. So with that, I'm gonna move on to item number three, which is the time for public comments on non-agenda matters. It's time when any member of the public um, may address 
uh, items of interest to this particular committee that aren't listed on the agenda. Uh, you can participate by uh, either raising hand feature on Zoom or by dialing in uh, star nine if you're calling. And so I will uh, check with the host to see if we have anyone who wishes to speak under public comments. Sure, Cisco, I don't see any hands being raised via Zoom. Okay. And are we uh, expecting any voicemail messages for this item? No, we are not. A public comments can be submitted live during the meeting um, via Zoom, via telephone, and in advance of the meeting via email. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, next, we have no minutes to approve, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to our schedule item, uh, which the, the first one is item 5.1, which is an overview of our charter review process. Take it away. Uh, thank you very much, um, Chair Cisco, and uh, welcome to everyone. Our first meeting, uh, a little later than we had been expecting, but we're all here together now, and uh, it is an impressive uh, group here, and uh, so appreciate uh, all of your participation. Um, so as we get underway in this process, I did want to give uh, set the stage by providing just a brief overview of the city charter and the city charter review process. Um, I'll tr try to go through this fairly quickly. Um, feel free to interrupt anytime uh, with any questions. Um, I also realize that uh, some of you, many, maybe a maybe many of you um, will already be familiar with some of this or maybe most of it. Um, but I do hope that it'll be helpful for us to um, uh, all get started on the same page. So uh, with that, uh, let's move to the next slide. Uh, as you know, every city in California has a choice. Um, they can be incorporated as a general law city, a city that would be governed by the general laws of the state. Or alternatively, the a city can choose uh, to exercise its rights under the home rule provisions of the California Constitution and become a charter city. Um, the adoption of a charter uh, does give the city a greater control over its own municipal affairs. And indeed, Santa Rosa is, of course, a charter city. Uh, very early on, the voters decided to uh, adopt a charter. And I've seen some conflicting dates as to when that first happened, but certainly um, by at least 1922, uh, charter was in place. Uh, as Jeff uh, Colin mentioned, the charter forms in, in essence our city's constitution. And in some later slides, we'll walk through some of the um, basic elements of the charter of our own charter. Next slide. Um, the adoption of the city charter gives the ability uh, under constitutional provisions, gives the ability to exercise um, maximum uh, authority over the form of the city government and its operations. Um, the city's charter ordinances and resolutions will prevail over state law with respect to municipal affairs. Uh, next slide. So municipal affairs, it, the city's authority is limited to um, governing on municipal affairs uh, with respect to matters of statewide concern, um, state law will continue to govern. Um, and so where's that line? Uh, it is uh, not a bright line and it is ever uh, evolving. And uh, I think maybe the most ready example is local housing. So historically local cities uh, had wide discretion uh, to regulate how and where housing is built. Um, but uh, more recently, the statewide housing crisis has turned what was once a matter of a municipal affair uh, into a matter of statewide concern. Um, we're gonna be, we'll have to be kind of watching that. Uh, it seems like kind of an esoteric uh, area of the law, but it does become significant. The preemption of local regulations um, by state law applies not only to ordinances and resolutions, but also to provisions of the charter itself. So we'll keep that in mind as we, uh, as we move th forward through this process. Next slide. 
Also, as we move forward, um, we'll want to keep in mind, as Jeff uh, Colin pointed out, that the charter is the high level governing document. It's kind of our fundamental, uh, fundamental framework. Um, it does set the general framework for the city's governance. And in general, we'll want to keep all of the details of the city governance and operations in ordinances and resolutions. And this is kind of a theme that you'll hear um, uh, throughout uh, this, this effort. And, and why is that? Uh, it's really for reasons of flexibility, uh, flexibility to respond to changing conditions. Uh, the charter uh, is adopted and amended only by the voters. So anytime we want to make any adjustments to the charter, we do have to take put it on the ballot uh, and get it approved. Uh, ordinances and resolutions give the city a little more flexibility. Uh, those can be adopted and modified uh, as circumstances need uh, by the city council. Next slide. This just simply reiterates that if we did have a city charter, it would be a general law city. And that uh, was a little bit of a surprise to me that only uh, out of the state's 481 cities, uh, just 121 are charter cities. So just a matter of curiosity. Uh, next slide. Um, so before we uh, delve into the review process, I do think it's helpful to have just a quick grounding in the basic nature and scope of our existing city charter. Um, that existing city charter is our jumping off point. Um, we've provided you a copy of the city charter and I do encourage everyone uh, to read through it, just get familiar with it. So next slide. Uh, one of the most important provisions in the charter is section 51. It's actually towards the back of the charter, um, but it is key. Uh, it authorizes the council to adopt ordinances in relation to municipal affairs. That again, tracks the language from the California constitution. And uh, with respect to those municipal affairs, the ordinances will control over the general laws of the state. And uh, section 51 then provides the backup that allows general state laws to fill in the gaps. So where uh, the council has not, the city has not adopted an ordinance, um, uh, will fall back uh, to state law. Uh, this, the effect of section 51 is that it preserves our local control and it gives us the maximum of control that, we, that the city can have. Next slide. I'm gonna go fairly quickly through the key elements of the city charter. Again, we gave you um, a copy of the charter and again, encourage you to take a look at it. Establishment of the city, that's the name, the boundaries and the powers of the city. Compensation, the composition of the city council. So the charter creates the seven member city council with each member serving a four year term and with minimal compensation. Now that's uh, obviously a section that we'll be looking at as we go forward. Meetings and procedures, it sets the meetings on Tuesday, it requires that the council meet at least twice a month, it requires an affirmative vote of four members to pass any ordinance or resolution. Uh, the charter provides uh, procedures for filling a council vacancy, and it provides for selection of the mayor and vice mayor by vote of the council uh, and sets forth their roles and responsibility. That's another section that we'll be uh, looking at uh, in the charter review process. Next slide. Uh, the charter also sets forth very basic ordinance procedures, including for emergency ordinances. Uh, it contains provisions to bolster city and neighborhood participation in city government and encourages diversity in boards and commission. That's another section that we may be uh, taking a look at. Charter defines the roles and responsibilities of various cities officers. Uh, that includes the city manager, city attorney, the fire chief, police chief, um, city engineer, and others. Um, the charter provides for a strong city manager model with the city manager to control city administration and operations. And it allows uh, the council to establish personnel rules and regulations. Uh, and then uh, in a provision that was added after the 2012 um, Charter review, it provides for binding arbitration for public safety and employee disputes. I'm sorry, that provision for binding arbitration was in prior to 2012, but was amended in 2012. Next slide. 
budget and finance uh, establishes the fiscal year, outlines the budget process, requires an annual independent financial audit. This is another section that we might look at. There's been suggestions of maybe moving to a two-year budget or at least allowing for that. Uh, Charter establishes the roles and responsibilities of the BPU, Board of Public Utilities, and it authorizes a setting of water and sewer rates and fees, uh, sets the timing and procedures for municipal elections. Uh, that will uh, uh, guide some of our work as well. And then it confirms that the city records are subject to the State Public Records Act. Um, that's a matter of law anyway, uh, but it is also in our charter. Next slide. Charter establishes a basic framework for procurement and contracting, including uh, design build uh, as of at least 2012. Um, that is another area that the council has suggested we take a look at, not the design build, but the basic framework for procurement and contracting. Maybe there's some areas for uh, refinement in those provisions. Charter establishes basic ethical standards for employees including no gratuities, no conflicts of interest, and personal liability for payment of any illegal claims. Um, as of 2002, the Charter also includes provisions on campaign finance reform. Next slide. So with that background, we now are going to move into our current Charter review process. The Charter review, the Charter section 12 provides for review of the city charter every 10 years. Uh, the last charter review began in 2011, resulted in revisions placed on the ballot in November, 2012. And as you all know, uh, council has appointed this committee to lead the 2022 charter review. Next slide. As you also know, the committee has 21 city residents. Um, I'll note that that means our quorum uh, is 11 residents, um, 11 committee members, um, and that will become relevant when we talk about the Brown Act. Uh, each council member, as you know, appointed three committee members and um, very pleased to see as we look at the screen, at the Zoom screen, really a diversity of age, race, background, and interest. So uh, I'm very excited to work with this group. Um, next slide. So what are the obligations and responsibilities of the committee? The committee is uh, uh, designated to research and draft recommended amendments to the charter. Um, committee members will bring their own, also bring their own knowledge and interest to the table. So we'll be doing some independent research. We'll be bringing some speakers to the committee to speak, but also you'll be bringing your own knowledge and interests. Um, and in, as we look at the different uh, topics, um, we'll want to do some significant research uh, on each of the topics, looking into existing programs in other communities. We'll look at the academic studies. We'll want to evaluate the costs. Um, and there'll be a number of other factors, and we'll get a little more into that a little later. Next slide. The process, the committee will put together recommendations. We're hoping that that will be done by late April or so. Um, those recommend recommendations for uh, charter amendments will be presented to the city council. If approved by the city council, those proposed revisions will be placed on the November 2022 ballot for the voters uh, consideration. And then if approved by the voters, um, the proposed revisions will be incorporated into the charter. And the charter um, amendments just take a majority vote. So next slide. Charter review topics. So the councils, uh, as you know, and as I think we've, we let you know in our introductory letter, um, has recommended 12 topics for consideration. Um, county can also, the committee can also um, bring its uh, own additional topics. Um, and the topics uh, may lead to um, uh, revisions of current charter language, brand new charter language, or deletions of existing charter provisions. Uh, and of course, as we've noted before, any of the changes are subject to voter approval. Next slide. Uh, 12 uh, topics recommended by the council for the committee's recommendation for the committee's consideration, sorry. 
uh, directly elected at large mayor. This would require a charter amendment to allow for that. Uh, that would include, that would entail both a, 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 a directly elected at large mayor and a reduction of districts from seven to six. Ranked choice of voting, that is where voters get to uh, identify their top two, three, four candidates. Um, we will be asking um, uh, perhaps the registrar of voters to come and talk to us about that. Uh, council recommended that, we, that the committee consider a police auditor or a police citizen oversight commission. Um, I'll note that the council will be considering um, approval of a contract for the police, independent police auditor uh, in just a couple of weeks, um, but we'll talk about whether we want to incorporate some provision for that into the charter as well. Next is council compensation. As you may be aware, council members receive uh, $800 a month for all of their uh, time and work on, uh, uh, as council members. Uh, mayor gets uh, $1,200 a month. Uh, mayor position is a very time consuming and very involved position. So the council has suggested for some time um, that we should look at compensation and potentially amend that. There are some state law uh, limitations, but we can talk about how, uh, how we can address those. Next slide. So that was the first four. Next four, climate change, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Both of those are very broad um, concepts. And so it'll be interesting to think about what is appropriate to put into our charter. Um, these are both also very um, evolving areas. Uh, so what do we want to put in our charter versus what do we want to leave uh, for ordinances or resolutions? What's the most effective way uh, to have positive results? Excise taxes uh, is another, cat another topic. And then regulation of rental properties, both of those kind of economic based. Next slide. Uh, and this is, these are the last four uh, procurement policy reforms. Again, a ge very general topic, but we can talk about what some options are there. We've had issues with our boards and commissions in terms of ensuring that there are quorums. We can look at whether there's anything that we could do in the charter to help address those uh, issues. The next is um, the removal of a mayor or a council member for misconduct. Um, that would require, there are state law limitations and that would require a charter amendment uh, to include those provisions. And then, as I mentioned earlier, um, the, the council did request that we look at the possibility of moving to a two-year budget process or at least um, considering whether to add that as an alternative. Next slide. So we can also um, have other topics. Uh, the committee members may uh, themselves have topics that they wanna bring to the table. Uh, the community as they come to speak may suggest topics that are of interest to the community, to the committee. And then uh, the council also asked um, that we work with um, city employees, unions and department heads uh, to see if there are uh, additional issues um, that they have seen in, in kind of the day-to-day -day operations of the charter. Uh, in the past, um, charter review committees have included what I've been calling kind of an omnibus um, charter amendment that includes those cleanup items. Next slide. So uh, that's a long list of topics to consider. Uh, and so I did wanna caution um, that we are gonna need to be careful in terms of the number of amendments um, that we end up recommending. Um, there's a significant time commitment in researching and drafting each of those topics, each, uh, amendments on each of those topics. So time commitment of this committee. Uh, there's also a real concern of potential voter fatigue if we have too many uh, recommended amendments on the ballot. And then of course, um, there is a cost uh, to each ballot measure that's placed, uh, uh, each measure that's placed on the ballot. 
Um, so one of the things that we'll start talking about as we move forward is trying to prioritize where do we want to really focus our attention and where do we want the voters to focus their attention. Next slide. Uh, and just some examples, 2012, um, there were four ballot measures presented to the voters, three of them passed. The district-based uh, district elections failed. And then the three that passed were the binding arbitration for police and fire employees, the design build procurement, and uh, the, what I call the omnibus bill, the charter reorganization and update. Next slide. And 10 years before that, um, there were three ballot measures presented to the voters. The two of the three passed. Um, the, the omnibus bill passed. Um, the council compensation provision for additional council compensation failed. And then the campaign finance reform provisions passed. Next slide. So later in the meeting, we'll start talking about developing the meeting schedule, develop a work plan, and then I just put down roll up our sleeves and get going. So. That's next slide. That's the end of the presentation. Happy to answer questions or uh, hear comments. Great. Um, I think it would be helpful. Um, I already see someone who already knows the drill. <laughs> I want each of the committee members, if you have questions, because there's so many of you, if you could use the raised hand feature. You could also try and wave me down, but I only have so many of you on my screen at one time, so um, I can I can look at this chart and see the wave hand feature and call on you. Um, and I can also seek help from uh, both uh, Miss Williams and Miss Manis to make sure I don't miss anybody. So um, I'm going to start with uh, Karen Weeks has a question. And remember to unmute and mute. Thank you, Francisco. Uh, Sue, you mentioned that in April, around April, that the recommendations would go to the council. Uh, will it go a couple of times to council or, or how will it just be one time and then yes or no? H how is that going to work or would it be like a study session to them? We would likely um haven't decided the form it's quite possible that it would be a study session to start with and then then final adoption the reason that we want to allow a couple of months is that if the council uh, you know maybe the council will accept all of the recommendations and we're good to go and we're we're on our way but if the council wants to make some adjustments or wants to explore something else we want to build in time in the process uh, to allow for that Okay, um, Logan. Thank you, Patty. Uh, so first, if next year is a hundredth anniversary, we clearly have to do a birthday party. So <laughs> of the charter. Um, <laughs> so we'll get working on that. Uh, two questions for you, Sue. Um, what? So thank you for going through that timeline. Uh, and maybe you don't know this offhand, but what is the deadline? to get on the November 2022 ballot? Uh, it's August. In fact, Stephanie may know this off the top of her head. It's in early August, um, but I don't remember whether it's the 8th or the 11th. Those are the dates that are popping into my head. Um, I'm Stephanie, just, do you know? Yeah, I'm just looking it up right now, opening up my calendar so I can let um, you know. So, um, Let me look this up and then I will get back to you. I'll raise my okay, hand so, when I have the information. Thanks, Stephanie. So well before, well after we're done. I was just kind of wondering what that, that time difference will be. Um, so that's, that's helpful. Um, and then that part about the council speaking to department heads, would that, and getting their input and maybe adding recommendations, is that gonna occur after our work wraps up, Sue, or does that go concurrently with us? It'll go concurrently. In fact, I've already gotten um, some um, recommendations from a couple of department heads. Um, I'm not anticipating a long list um, this year, but of course one never knows, but I have already gotten a couple of uh, cleanup items from department heads and uh, we may get more from, from other staff. So. Okay, that's helpful to know those as soon as possible, I think, so we can have the whole 
package in mind. Um, that's great. Those are my questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, but do you have information? I do. So the last day that council can take action to put a measure on the ballot would be at their meeting of um, August 9th. And um, then we have, I have to file those uh, with the registrar voters of office um, by August 12th. So um, it's a kind of a tight deadline, but that is the last day that council can um, decide to adopt a resolution to place measures on the ballot. Great, thanks. Ron Miller. Um, I'm thinking in terms of time commitment. Uh, how often would we meet? In the past, how long have meetings lasted? Uh, and how frequent would we be meeting? Uh, and also, what is our term limit? The, um, we are planning to, we'll talk about the meeting schedule later in the meeting, um, but I will say we are planning that the me meetings will be scheduled every other week. Um, it, both um, Chair Cisco and my intent that, that, that the uh, meetings uh, be just two hours, uh, five to seven. Um, we are sensitive to everyone's valuable time. Um, and we will try to make these meetings you know, as efficient uh, as we can. Um, you're sorry, I'm forgetting the other questions. There's, you asked about a term limit. There's no term limit. Um, How long will we serve? Uh, through this whole process. So for this, for the 2022 charter review. So starting tonight through um, probably late April will be uh, when we are targeting to have uh, the committee's work completed. Um, there may be a little bit of spillover, but that's that's what we're targeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's me. That's me. Um, I'm not sorry. Saying. Okay, <laughs> great. Thank you. Um, so my question may be more related to the work plan, um, but something I wanted to pose since we just reviewed the 12 um, items that the council has suggested the committee reviews is that um, in terms of the equity, diversity and inclusion um, item, I'd like to pose um, that we might consider this as a lens through which we do the rest of our work on the other items um, in addition to considering a, a revision of the um, um, related to this item. So I'm wondering if there is an order um, in which we will consider these 12 items. And if so, um, I'd like to ask if it's possible that we um, consider the diversity, equity and inclusion item earlier on so that we can build our capacity to use this as a lens um, and you know, ground ourselves in what that means um, when we consider the other subjects. Thank you, and I, I very much appreciate you raising that. Um, I had uh, intended to, to also mention that, um, that that is one lens, one of the key lens that we wanna look at um, all of the different um, proposals. Um, and certainly that is uh, very forefront in the council's minds as well. Um, so I'm very glad that you raised that. And you're exactly right. It, it, may also, it, it will certainly be a lens through which we look at all, all of our work, uh, but it may also be a particular item into the, into the charter. And then my other question was, um, in, you know, in, in that pursuit, will there be some sort of like training or um, a meeting where we focus on um, building our own knowledge of how to apply this lens um, by like an organ expert organization? Um, yeah, I, I, we hadn't, we had not 
frankly built that in, but I think that that is a very uh, good idea and, and something that we can talk about um, when we get into the talking about the work plan. So um, I appreciate you raising that. And I do think that that could be very helpful. Thank you so much. Uh, Jen Close. Thanks. Um, first of all, plus one to uh, Jessamine's request. That's perfect and definitely should be doing that. And um, the other uh, things that I, it would be interesting to me early on to see the ballot language from the past couple languages on charter amendments and the results. I did look on the county site and the results are there, but not the ballot language, at least not that I could find. Thank you. We'll, we will get that um, out to the um, out to the committee. And I agree. It's very helpful to look at that language and uh, also looking at the results from where we're 10 years later, things can change, but uh, that will, that's a, that's a very, very good idea. We'll get that to everyone. And I do know it's not easy to find because we tried to find it before and we had to, we did eventually track it down, but it's not readily available for folks just going online. Uh, Mark. Oh yes, thank you. Um, and this, this is a follow-up to um, Jasmine Godino's comment on having that, that filter and that lens. There's some really good examples of uh, budgeting with equity in mind that uses, um, uses data that's gathered um, from the Government Finance Officers Association. The city of Oakland was awarded or recognized nationally as a program <clears throat> that budgeted for capital projects and facilities with an equity lens. And they rank safety, um, quality of services, quality of infrastructure, um, ability of people to access, access other services. Um, it's a data-driven data um, data process that they used and it seems to be working. I can, I can copy you on that just directly. I'll pull it down from the web and send it to you. But there are, some, there are some studies that might be helpful. I'm not sure if it needs to be an ordinance or policy or, or a charter, but there are some examples that people are starting to look at um, at how, how the term equity really affects their processes in a detailed and data-driven way. So I'd be more than willing to help on the budget stuff. Great, thank you very much. That would be very helpful. Okay, I am not seeing any other raised hands. Oh, nope, not seeing any new raised hands. Um, so if there are any other questions before I turn it over to public comment, let me see your hand. And uh, okay, so with that, I will go ahead and um, open the uh, public comment on this particular item. Uh, again, if you're uh, calling in, you use star nine on your phone. If you're joining us by Zoom, you use the raised hand feature. Uh, you have three minutes to make your comment. Uh, a countdown timer will uh, alert you to when your time is up. So with that, I will head over to our host and ask if we have any members of the public wishing to speak on this item. Chair Cisco, I'm not seeing any hands being raised in Zoom on this item. And any voicemails? No. Great, okay. Okay, so um, with that, let's go back to um, our next item, uh, which is, my here, which is uh, 5.2, the introduction to the Brown Act and the Public Records Act. And um, Sue, are you doing that one as well? Um, I am, and uh, I will say this is going to be an unusual meeting. I am not usually going to be the one uh, speaking all the time, but uh, for this first meeting, I am doing some of these introductory uh, elements. So, um, uh, so don't worry, it won't be me speaking all the time. So, um, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Um, 
some of you I know have worked uh, extensively in local government, so you're familiar with Brown Act and Public Records Act, but I do think it's important for the committee uh, as a whole to at least have the general framework. Um, if, you, if you looked at the PowerPoint earlier, it's a very long PowerPoint, but please be assured I'll go as quickly as I can and uh, we'll skip over things that, that are not as relevant uh, to, to this committee. Um, so next slide. Next slide. Um, I think it's helpful to understand where the Brown Act came from and, and what, it's, uh, what it's really about. Uh, it is, was enacted in 1953 uh, after, I think it was the San Francisco Chronicle, did a very extensive uh, investigative uh, piece on secrecy in local government. So uh, this is all about opening the government up to be available to the public for the public to be able to easily participate um, and, uh, and all of the transparency uh, that we, we uh, kind of assume or hope for now. Uh, the principles from the Brown Act were incorporated into California Constitution in 2004, so it's now constitutionally based. And the basic statement in the Brown Act is, it's the people's business. The people of this state do not yield their sovereignty to the agencies which serve them. Next slide. Basic rule is that all meetings of a legislative body will be open in public and all persons permitted to attend. Uh, next slide. Uh, Charter Review Committee is a legislative body subject to the Brown Act. So um, we, the council expressly provided that, but that is also provided in the Brown Act itself. Brown Act encompasses any commission, committee, board, or other body of a local agency created, um, including by formal action of the legislative body, which the Charter Review Committee was. So we are subject to the Brown Act. Next slide. Um, there is an exception for ad hoc committees. Um, and so ad hoc committees that are less than a quorum of the members of the body and are a uh, created to address a single subject on short duration. Uh, I mentioned this, the council did authorize uh, this committee to create ad hoc committees. Uh, if we want to um, you know, have a smaller group focus on an issue uh, and that was done in the 2012 on one issue was done on the 20, in the 2012 charter review. Um, but I know uh, Chair Cisco and I have talked about this and we do encourage to the greatest extent possible to have the full committee involved in all of the uh, items that are, uh, are being considered. Gives that, you know, the, the council created a very diverse committee and we want all those diverse um, voices to be heard. Uh, next slide. So again, meetings have to be open to the public. So what's a meeting? It's wherever a majority of the members uh, uh, gather together uh, to hear, discuss, deliberate, or take action on any item that's within the subject matter jurisdiction of the body. So majority of the members uh, hearing, discussing, deliberating, or taking action. So even if you're just getting together to hear something, that's a meeting. And it's anything that's within the subject matter of um, of the Charter Review Committee, which is, of course, a very broad subject matter. Next slide. So formal or informal, planned, unplanned, whether it's in-person meeting or whether it's through technology or through inter intermediaries, and I'll talk about that uh, 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 in following slides. Meeting includes everybody getting together at one time or people communicating in sequence. Again, I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next slides. And it's for discussion or action. So the fact that you're not gonna take formal action, it's still a meeting. Again, the reason we're going through what's a meeting is that th these are all the activities that have to be open to the public, have to be noticed, have to be agendized. So includes informal meetings, that's just getting together informally. Again, if a majority, if 11 of you or more get together, that's a meeting that's subject to the Brown Act. Next slide. Includes hub meetings. This is where um, one committee member might call 
up to 11 other committee members to talk about uh, uh, an issue that's in front of the committee or within the committee's uh, subject matter ju jurisdictions, that will constitute a Brown Act required meeting. Next slide. Similarly, um, serial meetings. So A meets with B, B meets with C, C meets with D. You're communicating, you're establishing that communication line. You're trying to potentially reach agreement on something outside of the scope of a public meeting. So these serial meetings are expressly prohibited uh, by the Brown Act. Next slide. And it includes electronic communications. Uh, emails and texts, uh, especially um, be careful uh, on emails. Do not, if we send out an email to all of the committee, we'll always put at the top, do not reply all. Um, if you reply all, you have started a communication with the full group. Um, so it's our recommendation that if you want to communicate uh, something to the full uh, committee that it either be done at a public meeting or be done through staff. So um, we've had I've had instances where well all I want to do is to talk about scheduling a meeting. Talk to staff about that. Staff then can communicate to the full committee about scheduling issues, about substantive issues. Um, so uh, again, a big warning. It's an easy uh, easy trip trip up. So. Avoid sending emails or texts to the full committee. Next slide. And then what's not a meeting? Uh, individual contact between, it says commissioners, but should be committee members and staff, legal counsel or others, provided that you're not using that you know, as a means to, to uh, communicate between members. So you're free to talk to uh, me or to Rob or to Stephanie or to Dina or to others, uh, other staff that might be involved in, in one of the topics. Um, but we will never tell you what someone else told us or what someone else is thinking. That's so that we avoid any accidental Brown Act violation. Um, also, what's not a meeting is you can attend social or ceremonial events where no business uh, is discussed. So, next slide. Uh, also, you can attend conferences together, other gatherings that are open to the public, uh, open community forums. It's not a problem if a majority of the Charter Review Committee attends a meeting of the, um, uh, of the Board of Supervisors or a meeting put on by a community group. Uh, those are all uh, allowed and are not uh, meeting under the Brown Act. Next slide. Social media is, is, this is, I wanna really highlight, um, Brown Act violations are easy in the realm of social media. Um, there is a recently enacted law that sets specific guidelines. It's helpful to have those guidelines because in the past, there's a lot of gray areas here. But now um, you can use social media platforms to answer questions and provide the public with information uh, or to ask for information from the public on matters within the committee's jurisdiction but you cannot respond to any communication made, post, or shared by another committee member regarding any matter within the committee's jurisdiction. And this includes you can't like someone else's uh, media post about something that's before the, uh, within the subject matter uh, of the committee. You can't you know, uh, put a smiley face on it. Um, you just can't respond. So it's very easy to slip into that um, again, Difference is if it's, if it's a subject matter that is within the jurisdiction of the Charter Review Committee, which is really any, almost any city business, please don't comment or respond to uh, someone else's social media posting. Next slide. Um, there are th really four types of authorized meetings, only two of which will be relevant for us, regular meetings and special meetings. Regular meetings require 72 hour notice, special meetings require 24 hour notice. Uh, they can cover the same item, uh, same topics. Um, they have slightly different procedural rules. Emergency meetings would be if we were facing, you know, flood, earthquake, fires, things like that. Um, that's not gonna be something that the Charter Review Committee is gonna be addressing. So. We don't need to um, 
uh, consider emergency meetings. Closed sessions, there are, Brown Act allows uh, legislative bodies to meet in closed session to talk about litigation, personnel matters, real estate negotiations, and a few other um, uh, categories. Again, that's not gonna be relevant to our committee. So next slide. Uh, regular meetings, I already said, post um, agenda must be posted at least 72 hours uh, prior to the meeting. And uh, had a note there, but that's not relevant to this committee. Um, the city's open government ordinance requires additional extended notice for council meetings, but that's not relevant to uh, uh, other boards and commissions at the city at this point. Next slide. Special meetings, I already said, 24 hour notice. Uh, and it can be called by a Chair Cisco or by a ma majority of the, of the committee. Next slide. We can skip this. This is the, uh, and so what's gonna be on the agenda? The agenda is gonna contain a brief description of each of the items to be discussed. And it's gonna be posted in hard copy at, the, uh, at City Hall and online. Um, if people have requested mailing, they'll be mailed to them as well. Um, and uh, so that has to be posted again 72 hours in advance and the Brown Act generally prohibits any action or discussion of items that are not on the agenda. And next slide. Materials that are given to the committee must also be made available to the public. Um, we will try to have those um, uh, included in the, in the postings and in the noticing. Supplemental materials um, can be provided after the posting as long as they're made available to the committee and to the public at the same time. Uh, you'll see that uh, tonight when we have a very brief PowerPoint with respect to setting the meeting schedule and the work plan. Next slide. Um, I think this is not gonna be particularly relevant either. You can act on, yeah, let's just skip over that. Public comment, we have to allow the public to speak on each agendized item. And um, again, there's some exceptions that I don't expect to arise in the context of this committee. If they do, I'll let you know at that time. And then in addition, as you saw this, um, this evening already, that every agenda uh, must allow members of the public to speak on any item of interest uh, that's within the subject matter uh, jurisdiction of the uh, of the committee. Next slide. And if we do get um, public comments on items that are not on the agenda, we can um, very briefly, members of the committee could very briefly respond. They could ask staff questions for clarification. Uh, they could refer the speaker to staff. Um, they might ask the staff to report back um, at a subsequent meeting. So very limited response uh, permitted. Next slide. Uh, we can uh, adopt reasonable regulations uh, on public testimony. Generally, it's been the practice, the practice of the city and indeed most public, uh, public agencies um, to set a time limit. Uh, usually it's three minutes. Um, and if someone becomes overly repetition or is going off way off topic or tries to go beyond um, the three minutes, um, this says the mayor, but it will be the chair Cisco can stop that speaker. And ultimately, well, we're gonna be doing it by Zoom. So we don't have the issue of uh, pe removing people from the room if they become disruptive. Next slide. Uh, Brown Act violations, the remedies, uh, actions taken in violation of Brown Act uh, will be void. Uh, a member of the public can get an injunction to stop or prevent the violation, attorney's fees and costs to the prevailing plaintiffs. Um, those would all go toward, go against the city, not the individuals. Um, but uh, if there is an intentional violation, uh, intentional violation of the Brown Act is a misdemeanor and subject to criminal penalties. I've never in all of my years of public um, practice uh, seen that and I don't expect to see it here. So. We're good. Next slide. Um, any questions on the Brown Act before I go to the Public Records Act? If anybody has any questions, you can raise your hand. Okay. 
and I'm not seeing anybody right now. I think you can. And I will say, and I will okay. say as as we move forward, um, I will. You know, there there may be Brown Act uh, issues that arise over time, and I'll address those when they arise. So. Great, thanks. So on to the Public Records Act. Um, you may kind of wonder why um, why we're talking about Public Records Act, but it is important for you to understand because all of the documents that you um, prepare uh, and write uh, in the process of the charter review, those will be public records and subject to uh, disclosure. So Public Records Act, like the Brown Act, is all about transparency in government. Um, and I included two quotes here from the government code itself, the provisions, see a typo in there, but access to information concerning the people's business is a fundamental and necessary right of every person in this state. And that public records are open to inspection at all times and every person has a right to inspect any public record. So again, transparency and uh, letting the public know what, are, what we're up to. So next slide. What's a public records? It's any writing that contains information relating to the conduct of the people's public's business, prepared, owned, used, or retained by the state or local agency, regardless of physical form or characteristics. So includes paper documents, it includes um, uh, voice recordings, it includes emails, uh, texts, photographs, uh, so forth. Next slide. Again, letters, words, pictures, sounds, symbols, combinations, uh, all of that is a writing that is considered a public record and subject to disclosure. Next slide. Um, so it's information that relates to the conduct of the people's business, uh, public's business. Um, so anything related to city's business, prepared, owned, used, or retained by the city, whether the city has actual possession or constructive possession, that means that someone else may have physical possession, but we have a right to it. Um, emphasize that personal information is not a public record. So it's just information uh, that relates to uh, the city's business. Um, so if you have a document and you've written some notes on it about your, you know, um, um, an appointment for next week to remind yourself um, that will not be disclosed. Only the only the portion of the document that relates to city business would be disclosed. Next slide. A lot of exempt information. Um, so personal information, social security, driver's license numbers, uh, birth date, tax information. Um, that's probably the one that will be of most concern to people is those personal matters will not be released. Um, other categories, attorney-client communications, medical records, a lot of different, um, different elements. There's also a catch-all, which is a public interest balancing test, and that is whether the public interest in disclosure of the document is outweighed by the public interest in keeping the document confidential. Next slide. So as mentioned earlier, um, public records include electronic communications. So emails, social media postings are, uh, are potentially subject to um, disclosure under Public Records Act, text messages. And this includes things that are on your personal device if they relate to, bus to the city's business. Again, uh, those things that are in your personal accounts, personal devices, uh, that do not relate to the city's business are not disclosable. Next slide. So there was a case a few years ago, 2017, um, that the court held that when a city employee, uh, and that includes uh, also um, members of boards and co commissions and committees, uses a personal account to communicate about the conduct of public business, the writings may be subject to disclosure under the Public Records Act. So this is um, if you use your personal email um, to communicate about the committee's work, um, that is going to be a public record. It's about what's the subject of the of the record, what's the subject of the writing, not where it's held. Uh, next slide. Um, but 
the, um, the courts have confirmed um, that there's no particular method required for searching for those documents that are related to, to, um, to city business, simply that it has to be calculated to lo locate responsive uh, records. And this is where it's, uh, I think you'll be most um, interested and, and concerned is that the city can reasonably rely on you, the members of the committee to search your own devices and send over to us uh, any, any writings or communications that you have on your own devices um, that relate to the city's business. So we will not, and that has been the city's um, practice and will continue to be the city's practice. So if you are using your own um, uh, uh, phones or own uh, uh, computers, laptops, we will not be asking uh, for that, but we would ask you find any, you know, keep, if you can keep your records related to the, the committee in a single location, that's going to be much easier for you to then send that, um, send that on over to us. Next slide. Um, and this I just included in, it's not, it's you, you individually will not be responding to any requests. That'll be within the city staff's responsibility. Um, and particularly in the city clerk uh, leads that effort. But I just think it's relevant for folks to know that the request for documents really can be in any form. Uh, it can be in person, it can be phone, in writing. We ask people to put it in writing, but doesn't need to. Requester doesn't need to identify themselves and they do not need to identify the reason for the request. So um, all it takes is someone to ask for the documents related to the charter review committee and we're, uh, we're on it and gathering those documents and producing them. So um, be thoughtful as you um, prepare um, uh, records related to the committee's work um, and just be aware that whatever, whatever documents you produce uh, could be subject uh, to uh, public release. Next slide, any questions? So any questions on this? I have a couple. Um, I don't see anybody else raising their hand. Um, one of the questions is in our uh, introduction letter, uh, you were, we have to, as committee members, take the um, conflict of interest training online. You gave us information about how to do that. And um, I, I think Ms. Williams was gonna look into this. I'm curious about when we might anticipate that the next uh, anti-sexual harassment training might be offered or if there is a way to take it online. I don't know if she was able to find that out or not, but just so our committee members know what they have to do within this um, you know, period. I have not been able to find out that information yet, but as soon as I do, I will send it to the committee. Um, and I do want to just say that um, all of the committee members have been issued city email addresses. And so that is the email address that we will be using to send you any documents. So I would encourage you to make sure that you're checking that email because that is how you will be getting the meeting um, invites to be placed on your calendars and how you'll be getting any um, other documents that may not have been published with your packet and how you'll be notified with that your agenda packet has been published. The city clerk's office will be using uh, the city email addresses and it, and it really also helps if we ever do get a request for communications um, by the committee members for us to um, you know, search the city email addresses. So just, um, you know, recommend that you use that email address and communicating with um, staff too. And, and thank, thank you, sir. I'll follow up if I may, um, Chair Cisco. Um, thank you very much because I do, I, I've been to um, note that and really encourage people to use your city email. Also want to note that um, we do have um, city iPads available 
Um, so I know a few people have um, accepted that um, offer. Uh, if anyone else would like a city iPad, uh, they are the smaller iPads, not the larger ones, um, but uh, do just let me know. Yes, and I can give you the, um, you can also contact me and I can um, give you the information. If you haven't already been contacted by Tara Norman in IT um, to schedule an appointment to get your iPad issued to you, um, you can. And if you don't have her information, I'll be happy to send it out. And um, the other question, um, Ms. Williams, uh, on our, um, I believe there's a website specific to the Charter Review Committee. Are, are those emails going to be posted there so that if a member of the public wanted to contact a committee member, that that's where they would look? Yes. We, so we yes, the um, committee roster will be posted on the um, Charter Review 2022 webpage. And then there is also an email address for the public to um, send a communication to the committee and it will be sent to the full committee as well as um, the city attorney's office and the city clerk's office so that we all get it. Yeah, and I would just recommend that if, if as individual uh, committee members, if you happen to get a communication that you always forward it off to, to staff so that um, we all will benefit from whatever that communication is. So you're not being singled out. Yes, and you don't, and that's when you don't want to reply all to. Um, this is very similar to what we do for city council. City council has a general email address that the public uses to send their comments of concern. And so none of the council members reply to it. We, we administer those here. And so we would ask the same of the committee members to not reply all or to those um, emails that you see coming in from the public. Great, thanks. Um, Ms. Manis, you have your hand up. Is that for when I do public comment or did, were you gonna jump in here? I just wanted to also just make a brief announcement that um, starting with the next meeting, um, we'll set up a reoccurring Zoom credential. So it'll be the same one for the duration of your service on this committee. Um, and it touches on what Stephanie and Sue were talking about, making sure you use your city email address when you're logging into your Zoom account. Um, that will get you into the panelist portion of the meeting rather than participating as an attendee that needs to be promoted. It's a security issue and we ask that all of our boards and commissioners make sure they're logging into their Zoom meeting from their srcity.org email address. Thank you. Great. And if there aren't any other questions, then I will move as we're supposed to onto um, public comment on this item. Again, if any member of the public wants to comment on this particular item, if you're calling in, dial star nine. If you're using Zoom, use the raised hand feature. You will be given three minutes to speak. And I will check with staff to see if there's anybody waiting to speak. Chair, I'm seeing no hands be raised in Zoom for public comment on item 5.2. Okay, and I assume no voice there. Okay, so with that, we're gonna move on to 5.3, our charter review work plan. Uh, thank you. And again, uh, I'll emphasize this is unusual that you're hearing from me so much. This will much be a much, much more diverse meeting uh, going forward uh, in terms of speakers. So, um, but now's the, the opportunity, and this is, I really am gonna hand this over to the committee after just, I think showing two slides. Um, the uh, for for your discussion. So first, uh, next slide. We've talked about the meeting schedule. Um, we're looking to meet every other week, uh, starting again tonight. And so our next meeting would be on Wednesday, December first, the following December fifteenth, and then of course off for the holidays, and then starting again on January fifth and January nineteenth. 
and then so far on down. Um, but that's just our proposed uh, initial meeting schedule. Um, so we open it up to the uh, committee if that kind of a schedule works. Again, we've talked about meeting on Wednesday evenings, five to seven, um, but um, it, it is up to the uh, committee. And then if I, uh, I think I'll go ahead and just get to the, we'll, we'll skip quickly through the next, the next three slides are really the, the charter review topics. We've already gone over those, so I won't repeat them. Um, and next slide but we have them in case you want to, we have that list in case you want to talk about it or look at it. And then the, the, the next slide, the last slide. Um, and this is as we talk about the meeting schedule and the work plan and how you want, might want to organize it. Um, think about, we need time to research and draft um, items. Again, I talked earlier about prioritizing our efforts. Um, where do we want to focus first? Um, and uh, then that ultimately, we're gonna wanna have a limited number of proposed amendments. Um, there's not a set number, but um, trying to put all 12 and perhaps some additional ones on the ballot would be uh, daunting. And again, that we're looking to complete the process by late April. So those are the kind of the parameters, the initial parameters. So I hand it back to the chair and, and, uh, and to the committee. Great. Well, let's start with um, the proposed meeting schedule. Um, any comments, concerns, suggestions about our initial meeting schedule? It is important that um, it, when Sue and I met about this, we really wanted to make sure that there, there was um, a reasonable amount of time. We figured Wednesdays were the best evening because of council meetings and other board and commission meetings, trying to uh, have it every other uh, week. There may come a time when we have to have more meetings and we may, we may need to do that, but we just thought as a, an initial schedule, this would work. And um, the five to seven time was probably the, the most compatible with those that are uh, working and for members of the public to be able to have an opportunity to participate, but definitely open to suggestions or concerns about uh, just the initial meeting schedule. The other thing I do want to say um, is, uh, well, well, two things. Um, in keeping our meetings efficient, um, if, if you have questions, um, please, uh, use your city email and email those questions in advance of the meeting to, uh, to Sue and to Rob so that um, they can, you know, they can come forward with an answer uh, that will make our meetings more efficient. They'll have ready answers to questions that pop up in between meetings. So please, please use that, um, that that way to uh, communicate your questions. We'll also be taking questions obviously in the meeting, but some might require more research and the, the sooner that uh, staff has those and can get um, uh, get going on those, the, the more efficient our meetings will be. We really wanna keep the meetings to two hours just so that it's not exhausting for us. Uh, we're all busy people, but um, we want it, we want efficiently run meetings and we wanna have them done well. So that, that was the thinking behind Behind this meeting and the timing. So um, the other thing too is to remember um, if you do have to miss a meeting, I would appreciate um, if you would let both me and uh, uh, Sue know in advance as much as you know. And here, if you do have to miss a meeting, uh, my understanding is these are being recorded. They'll be on video accessible uh, the next day. Uh, so if you, if you happen to miss the meeting, you would be able to watch the video and catch up to whatever uh, work has been done in your absence. So just wanted to say those few things. And then first, anything you wanna say about our meeting schedule proposal? Uh, Jocelyn. Yes, um, for me personally, Wednesdays don't really work because I have a JC class. 
from five to seven. I had a call in absent today, but I was wondering if any other council members would be okay with moving it to either Thursday or Friday, possibly. So committee members, that's everybody's <laughs> Um, Thursdays are not a possibility because there are other board and commission meetings that conflict um, with what staff has to do. Um, Friday, I don't know, how, how, to, how does the committee feel about Friday? <laughs> Nobody wants to say. <laughs> Fridays are um, a tough one, I think. Yeah, I think it is going to be a tough one, yeah. Is it is it possible to maybe do a doodle pool where we can see what would work best and and then work from there? Because having set a set time right now may not work for everybody. But if we can do that offline, do a little bit more research to find out if everybody is available on a particular day and do it that way. Okay, um, you're nodding, Mr. Walsh. So. What, what's involved with that, Ms. Minor? I'm not really familiar with that term. So we, what we can we can do a doodle um, poll. I we've done that when we've had to schedule some council meetings. Um, but I will say that usually the doodle poll will um, we give options as opposed to keeping it open. And as Chair Cisco said. Thursdays are really hard and Tuesdays are out of the question. Um, Fridays, you know, we could do it. Um, it may require some staffing because we, uh, our work schedule, our staff doesn't work on Fridays. Um, so it may be, um, but it's not um, impossible, but I can certainly send out a doodle poll to the committee to see um, but your options are probably be pretty limited because we do have a, a lot of other boards and committees and commissions that staff is also um, working on, with that um, will conflict with um, on some of those other days. But I'd be happy to send out a doodle poll tomorrow um, to the committee. Um. I, sorry to jump in, but um, the class, um, Yvette, is that going to be through next year or is semester ending for you in December? I'm sorry. Stay sorry, there was the conflict on for Wednesdays was because there's a JC class um, happening, correct? So I was wondering if the class is through this um fall semester only or if it continues until next semester because if it's just this fall maybe we can make some accommodations and then return to Wednesdays for the next year um it ends in December um Scott you have something to say once I unmute myself um well having been there I know there's I'm not sure the doodle poll is going to give us um, a whole lot of guidance um, because we don't really know what's, I mean, the staff, you know, the city attorney's office has a million other things they're doing. We're working in their schedule, not just our schedule too. And I'm, I'm a skeptic of, of the doodle giving us any valid information that we can really focus on. Um, I suspect Fridays won't work and at least, and Tuesdays, Thursdays off at least Monday and Wednesday. Um, so I, I'm, I'm happy with Wednesday, um, five to seven. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a good night in the middle of the week. And when does, when does her class end in December? What's the date? I believe the 15th. Okay, so you would miss two meetings. Yes. Does anybody else have a conflict with the Wednesday? I've got some hands raised. Um, Annie, was that you talking? Yeah. Um, so 
Uh, Ron, you want to weigh in on this? Yeah. Uh, the option of Monday has not been uh, raised. And uh, Sue, you want to say anything about how well, Monday? We're hearing there's staffing problems on Friday. What what our issue with Monday? Yeah, I was, I was just trying to look at the calendar. Um, you know, Monday Monday evenings are a poss possibility. Mondays are often uh, quite busy um, with council meetings on Tuesday, but we can we can make that work. I think Fridays are difficult because we're also going to be asking us guest speakers from other jurisdictions, from um, you know, other agencies uh, or organizations, and I think to ask people to come. Uh, on Friday evenings is, is a little bit challenging. Um, but you know the, we could we could look at Mondays, you know, even if we tried to do Mondays just in December, but I don't know if we have anybody who has conflicts on Mondays. So also maybe sorry to jump in, but I'm just wondering, maybe I missed it, but Jason, what time is your class? Like if in December, if we could just push the time one way or the other, if that helped. Five to that's the class is actually also five to seven exactly. <laughs> Man, like uh, we do three to five on those for two meetings or seven to nine or something. So Logan, you have something to add? Um, I'm sorry, Jocelyn, that those two, the next two meetings don't work for you. I, I have personally for me, they do work um, and those four dates are good for me and I just um speaking generally I think Wednesdays are good days for public meetings I think you tend to get higher attendance in the middle of the week from my experience um so I would support us going with that uh I guess is that the first and the third Wednesday was that your scheme Patty yeah um that works for me um Uh, well, I'm gonna, I'll get to Karen in a minute, but um, one of the issues I, I really would like to get that settled tonight, uh, uh, doing a doodle pull puts it off. We've already had to put this off and um, so I'm concerned about that. I think we can do it here, trying to find out what the majority of people can do by just letting, it, letting me know. Um, so uh, it sounds like for the majority, unless I hear something from somebody else, the Wednesday works for the we most part. Um, we do a show of hands also for Wednesday or Monday um, because yeah. maybe that people can't make it on Monday and it may be um, irrelevant. Right. So I think, was it Sue that recommended that we do Mondays for the month of December? and then go to our Wednesdays moving forward? Is that an option? Either way, uh, for me, Wednesday is works ideal as well, so. Sue, so, I don't know if it's a Brown Act violation, but I can use the polling feature for like the equivalent of a straw vote um, in Zoom and throw up a quick poll that says day of the week preference Monday or Wednesday to get the quick count, but I don't know if that's acceptable via Zoom for Brown Act. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that it might be better for Brown Act um, if we had uh, maybe, and maybe the questions are posed, everyone would have to take down their hands to begin, but the question is posed who cannot make it uh, on Mondays, who cannot make it on Wednesdays and see if we have, um, you know, if we have clear results from that. Okay, so we're going to do that now. We're going to ask, yeah, take your hands down and um, who cannot make it on Monday? Looks like six people cannot make it on Monday. And then who cannot make it on Wednesday? Yeah. 
Jocelyn is in here and two, two people have problems with Wednesday. Um, I have something to offer that might be helpful. Um, I can um, offer myself to meet with Jocelyn um, for the two meetings where she, if that does not violate the Brown Act um, and kind of get anything that she wants to share with the committee and report back after the meeting to fill her in for those two dates, if that would um, kind of be helpful for December. I, I was gonna maybe suggest that too. And because the videos of the two meetings will be accessible the day after the meeting, maybe it's something that um, you can view Jocelyn and then maybe uh, meet with Jasmine to, um, you know, submit any comments or concerns so that she can report out for you um, or, you know, you can submit them to send them to me and I can, we can, um, you know, disseminate that information to the committee. Yeah, that sounds good. And then we, we Anna saying that Wednesdays was difficult. Anna, could, where, where are you on that? I'm sorry, that was an accident. I forgot to like just press the raise hand off again. <laughs> so I apologize. That's great. Um, and then Karen, did you have something you wanted to say? You had your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to go back to uh, Logan's comment that it's the first and third Wednesdays. Is that correct or is it every other Wednesday? Because the first and third isn't necessarily every other Wednesday. So can, can we get that uh, clarified tonight? That would be great. Thank you. Yes, yeah. our, our discussion yeah. with the... Uh, oh. Go ahead, Sue. Our discussion was every other uh, Wednesday. Um, I don't know if it's... I don't know how many um, meetings we would miss if we just went first and third Wednesdays. Um, so that's that's really up to the committee and and uh, up to the chair. I'm fine with that. I just wanted to clarify with it, which it was. So thank you, Sue. I appreciate that. I think and it's it, easier yeah. to remember every other. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, let's we, see. We can um, make a calendar and send it out. So that um, you have it, plus you'll be getting the meeting invite like you did for tonight's meeting um, through, um, so that you can put it on your calendars also. Okay. Um, uh, Mark. Thanks very much. I was wondering, um, and, and I don't, it, as long as Jocelyn already said something works, I don't want to put a fine ointment, but Jen, Jen Close had a good idea is if it's the two meetings in, in December, is it, is it possible that we could adjust the times so that the December um, attendance was, was okay? That's just one idea I wanted to, to consider. Um, Jocelyn, are there different times that you could make and then could we, see if anybody has a conflict with those times for the two December meetings? Well, um, for me, probably three to five or either just like seven to nine afterwards. But I feel like that's either too early, people are still working or it's probably too late. So. Okay. That's... And Joss, you're comfortable with the solution that Jasmine came, came up with, correct? Okay. Okay, okay, good. Um, so I think we have our, our schedule at least started. Um, and then uh, we, what else did we need to do tonight? Were we going to um, I had, right, remind me, Sue, what, what the next yeah. yeah. Um, I had hoped we could have some discussion on, on the work plan. I, I realize though we're getting late. We only have maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So maybe, uh, you know, maybe what would be good for us and helpful for us um, staff is, um, is there, where would you like to start? Um, and, you know, we heard earlier, you know, 
the possibility of maybe we should start early on uh, with uh, discussion of DEI in terms of that being a, um, a lens for us to be considering. Um, I don't know that we'll be able to get um, speakers here uh, in at that time, but I can certainly we can certainly try to do that if that's where the committee would like to start. Or would you like to have, um, I, I just wanna make sure that next, the next meeting is helpful and that we are moving forward. Um, so I hesitate just kind of putting off the work plan discussion, but maybe we have the diversity, equity, inclusion discussion and then a, a broader work plan discussion People can think about at least those 12 items, think about whether there are more items that you would like to consider. In the meantime, we will start to uh, try to um, you know, get speakers. Um, the order in which we take up topics may also depend on when speakers are available. Um, so I open that up. Ernesto, you have your hand up. Yeah, thank, thank you. I think that some of these items are, are relatively clear as far as what their intent is. Others are a little bit more ambiguous. For example, we talk about climate change. What does that mean? Uh, the excise tax. Uh, so maybe maybe spend some time to get some kind of clarity on what, uh, what each of these items means. That way it will be better able to prioritize and identify what kind of things we want to tackle first. And Karen? Um, I would like to uh, early on talk about uh, DEI um, and even equity principles that we're going to use during this process. Um, I think that would be very helpful. And then the second thing is I would also like to know what, have, what items on the list that the council provided can only be done in the charter and what can be done via, you know, an ordinance, uh, code change, whatever. And I think that would be, for me, that would be very helpful to know where we really need to focus. Scott. Well, actually, Karen just, that was the question, uh, Karen's question was mine, but the other one that maybe as a starting point for the next meeting, because I don't think we're gonna be able to tackle all this tonight, I'm looking at the charter, you know, section 10 and 11 basically are the two sections that in the existing charter deal with, you know, um, the citizen task force, um, uh, diversity. Maybe we start just as an organizational thing, sort of start to have everybody review those sections and then taking from that kind of go through that list and tier because I could see that that would tear off into council issues of you know salary blah 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 and maybe that'll give a structure that sort of will prioritize help prioritize us in terms of where we go with it does that make sense it does it's like do our homework in advance um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that does make sense um jen yeah i so i was going to suggest that i know um, that you would prefer not to have subcommittees and I agree generally, but I was just going to suggest that to, to accelerate the, um, and get a head start on the a DEI conversation that a subcommittee be formed for that, just since we seem, that seems to be something we want to address first, um, before we get to anything else. Um, so I just want to make that suggestion. Ms. Gallagher, I mean, part of what why we wanted why we want to keep the committees together is in keeping with the DEI lens. So, uh, you know, I understand there's a lot of information, and that's where again, bring your personal expertise uh, to the conversation. Um, but I, I definitely agree that uh, that we can start there and 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 use that lens. But I'm concerned about breaking apart to do it isn't in keeping with that. <laughs> so, okay. Um, Adriana. Um, so still on, I think on that note, I was just wondering, 
does the city employ any staff that has any knowledge or expertise on this subject that could po probably facilitate this process without breaking up the group or at least to get started on this? I'm just curious. Yes, we do. And what's two, two um, people in particular are coming to my mind. I mean, I've, I've already um, reached out to uh, one is Socorro Shields, who is our diversity, equity, and inclusion, and equal opportunity officer uh, in our HR department. And then also uh, Magali Teas, who is uh, uh, heads up our community uh, engagement uh, division. Uh, both are um, experienced and uh, knowledgeable and, and could start, start that conversation. So, um, I was going to reach out to the, I'll reach out to both of them to see if they might be available next week. I mean, in two weeks on the first. Um, and then also, you know, we'll look at the the Oakland's policy. Um, and if folks have other resources that they think would be helpful, um, go ahead and send them to me and to Rob, um, and we'll we'll work on putting something together. So. Uh, Logan. Thanks, Patty. Um, yeah, so I definitely support uh, Jasmine's recommendation to start with uh, DEI as a lens to do all this work in. And uh, so the first meeting would be ideal. If we can't get someone scheduled, let's, let's try to get that as early as possible. Um, and then the second thing I think that would be helpful, and I can't recall who said this, is getting a summary of what the meaning, the intent was maybe behind the council placing those items on our list, the 12 items. Um, and I know that that it might be difficult to interpret, but maybe just a video from the meeting or something that you could do, Sue, or just a short summary on each issue. Um, and then I think the third thing for efficiency would be deciding what we don't wanna work on. Uh, so getting that stuff out of the way, and I'm just hypothetically, if we're not going to do a short-term rental ordinance um, and put that on the ballot for folks, and we're going to direct that back to the council, you know, getting that out of the way first, I think would, would help with our workflow. Yeah, I think that, um, and again, in keeping with both Karen and Scott's uh, thinking, finding out what can only be done in the charter, looking at this list. A lot of what, we, what some of the items on this list have already been handled or in, are in process of being handled by ordinance. So again, just trying to get that clarity of what's really important to, um, to be focusing on. So definitely agree with that. And uh, the, the video is available to watch for committee members, um, you know, you get a sense of why those items might have been on there and, and, and the struggle of whether to pass them on to us all <laughs> intact 12 or to have uh, uh, limited them. And there was a little bit of differences on that. So might be interesting to watch that video. And Karen, you have another comment? Yeah, I just wanted to do an FYI that the videos are on the charter uh, review website. Oh, so they are. You don't even have to go scrolling through all of the council items, so. Okay, great. They are they are there and they're helpful. I was thinking that's also for the public's benefit to just uh, get a summary uh, so they don't have to go back and watch that whole video. Yeah, I, I definitely think we need the summary, but just for the, if you wanna watch the whole thing, it's, it's available to, to be watched. But I think your suggestion it's in keeping with let's let's sort of narrow the focus on what's been done, what what what's most important, what can only be done by um, by the charter. So, anything else? I'll go ahead and uh, repeat what what we've got so far, at least what I've heard so far. Um, uh, Mr. Walsh is going to be submitting uh, Oakland's. Uh, accounting policy, uh, equity policy. So you, you're getting that. We've asked- yeah, yeah, Chair, I already forwarded it to, uh, to Dina. 
use your fast. <laughs> okay. Check. Um, and that the committee would like, um, it doesn't have to be this next meeting, but soon what the actual uh, language was on the, on the ballot so that we have an idea of what kind of what, what we're aiming for here. Um, I'm hearing agreement that we begin with the diversity equity principles and that there's um, some staff that can give us some information about that so we can begin to develop that as our lens for everything else. And then we'll be looking at um, uh, what cannot be done in the charter, um, what uh, the summary is of uh, um, of what the, just the idea of what has already been accomplished by ordinance or might soon be accomplished by ordinance. So we can decide what we don't want to work on. And then uh, Mr. Bartley's suggestion that we all take a look at section 10 and 11 of the charter to, to have a, a, an ability to use that information as we have those discussions. What a cute little dog you have, Jen. <laughs> so, um, Sue, anything? else that we and I do see a hand raised from Ron. Can you tell me who it is? Oh it's Ron. There's Ron. Yeah I was wondering just in terms of efficiency if we could have a, a, the agenda items maybe as much information as the staff has and, and, and provided to us in an email by one week prior to the meeting. And then what we could do is send you our thoughts so that when we come to a meeting, uh, it will already, you'll already know what we plan, where we each come with our own ideas and expertise. I'm, I'll, I'll respond. Um, yes, in an ideal world, we'll, we'll try to get out information as early as possible. Um, okay. I will Note that for next week, uh, next week's a holiday week, uh, I'm going to be out for much of the week. Um, and I know Rob will be out at least some of the week, I believe. Um, but we will get as much as we can uh, to you in advance. Um, and we will try to always make that a practice to get materials to you. It'll be through the, um, I have to talk with Stephanie and Dina in terms of we would normally provide those materials through the agenda posting because um, we need to, when we provide materials to the committee under the Brown Act, we need to be able to provide them to the public at the same time. So um, that's gonna be a little, bit, uh, a little bit difficult. I also recognize that because we're meeting every other week, um, unless we have the schedule really worked out going forward, um, we're gonna be jamming uh, right after the meeting to prepare for the, for the following meeting. So we will do our best to try to um, get things out as early as possible. We'll also talk to um, Stephanie and Dina about this week we did this, for this meeting we did post the agenda on the Friday. Um, and maybe what we'll do going forward is to try to post that sooner. But I know that um, city clerk's office is already posting quite a few different agendas. But I agree, ideally, you know, um, so we accord with that as well. Try to figure out um, the best. Yeah, the sooner that we have the information and the sooner, like you said, um, Mr. Miller, we can submit questions so that the, the city attorneys are prepared to give us those answers. That's definitely our most efficient method to the degree that we can do it. Exactly. Thank you. And then Annie. You have a question. Um, actually, I have more of a comment related to the last comment. Um, I don't. I don't know that we should be like sending in emails to state how we feel about. It. I think that it's something that we need to hash out a little bit, and and people will have other opinions that we all need to listen to, um, and take into account. And I feel like that's part of what we're supposed to be doing. But maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I agreed. It's not not just your opinions or your thoughts already, uh, because we want to be sharing those within the meeting with each yeah. other. Submitting questions uh, is, is really where where I'm going with that. So, okay. uh, 
yeah, our thinking needs to be shared because we'll, we'll influence each other as we should as a committee. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then Rob, you have something. I just wanted to add that if there are communications directed to Sue, if you'd be kind enough to CC me on those, it'll expedite the process as well. So she doesn't have to relay it in turn to me. So. And, and that also goes for if any committee members are sending anything to the clerk's office, please make sure you include uh, me as well, me, Sue, and Dina, but um, so that we all have the same information and don't have to forward everything. And I would include uh, Rob on that as well. Yeah. Include anything that you send, send to both Rob and to me. Uh, and then likewise, if it's going to the clerk's office and send to Robin and to me as well. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have a hard time remembering that. Can somebody mm -hmm. put those things in an email to us? Like yes. when I send something mm -hmm. to you, which group do we send it to? Or it's yes. other? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. I would have the same problem. <laughs> Maybe if there's an email group on the website, for instance, yeah. then then we would just know, you know, send it to all all of you. Yes, that would be great. Annie, did you have another question, or you just didn't put your hand down? Nope, I just didn't put my hand down. Thank okay. you. Okay, so I don't have any other questions. Do anything? else you need clarified? No, I think that that's very helpful. We will put together um, a list of the topics, clarifying the topics, uh, and also what can be done only by charter and what, what can be done by ordinance or resolution. Um, we will try to get the prior ballot language out uh, for folks, and then we will get, um, we will also uh, try to get the um, diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, speakers uh, lined up uh, to talk about equity principles and uh, using DEI as a lens to look at all of our other um, all of our other uh, topics. So it, it sounds like our next meeting will involve that uh, in particular as a starting point, and then some uh, working together about starting to prioritize or eliminate or add things. Yes. Correct. Great. Okay. Okay, anything else before I ask the public if they want to add anything? I'm not seeing anything. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask if the public wishes to make any comments on this particular item. If you do and you're on Zoom, you need to do the raise hand feature. If you're calling in by phone, you have to dial star nine. And that can let me know if there's anybody waiting to speak. Chair, I'm not seeing any hands being raised uh, from the attendee side, and we received no voice messages or emails on this item. Thank you. So um, with that, the next item, if we have no subcommittee reports, we have no written or electronic communications, and uh, right now no future agenda items are pertinent. With that, I'm going to adjourn <laughs> our first exactly on time <laughs> of the chart committee. Thank you all for participating. It, this is, it, it's going to be a lot of work, but it's going to be really exciting and, uh, and, and fun, hopefully. So and thank you for taking on the role of the chair, Patty. I'm sure it's not easy. <laughs> thank you, thank Chair you. Cisco. <laughs> Happy to be chair. Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you, Patty. Nice to meet everybody. Meeting all. Chair. Thanks.